Russian don't trust China. China is asshole. You know what I do with assholes? I lick them. Okay. Aha. Aha. Sweet mustache. Right. You look, you probably have a shot over there. <laughs> okay. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> if there was a man right in front of you, sitting all alone, crying in pain from hunger, near death from sickness, and what if all you had to do was reach into your pocket and pull out a couple of bucks to save that man's life? This is that man. And this is that moment. Go online and join UNICEF with your $10 billion monthly gift. It's only $333,333 a day. And it means you'll get this man the critical help he needs to survive. Please, go online now because this man in front of you can't wait another moment. My fellow Americans, Words have many meanings, and sometimes instead of conveying our meaning, they can suggest other meanings. When we talk about the children of the community, they are a children of the community. Well, we are the United States of America because we are united. And we are states. I'm talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Whatever we have in store cannot be known. The past was once the future. The future is, I should say, unknown. We gotta take this stuff seriously, as seriously as you are because you have been forced to have to take it seriously. Obesity is a serious disease and it needs to be taken seriously. You need to get to go and need to be able to get where you need to go to do the work and get home. I hope that clarifies the issue and this can be the last word on those words. Certain issues are just settled. Clearly we're not. No, that's right and that's why I do believe that we are living sadly, in um, real unsettled times. There are areas in the Twin Cities, in Minneapolis, where it is easier to buy a gun than a fresh apple. Now, why is that? Because there aren't gun shops in Minneapolis. You fucking retarded scumbag. I have never denied the outcome. Oh, really? And I do have one very affirmative statement to make. We won. But I didn't lose. I got the votes. But we won't know exactly how many because of how they cheated. <gasps> I did win my election. I just didn't get to have the job. We were robbed of an election. Just using the word rigged, using the word steal, do you think it's dangerous going into 2020? I, I don't because we can actually back it up. And so in response to what I believe was a stolen election. And I'm not saying they stole it from me. They stole it from the voters of Georgia. I spent the, the interim 10 days between the election and my non-concession day, as we call it. Uh, <laughs> in fact, someone outside asked if I'm ever going to concede. The answer is no. It was not a free and fair election. I think the election was stolen from the people of Georgia. I believe it was stolen from the voters. Ooh. I have never denied the outcome. You see, even in Florida, some of the farmers and the growers saying, why are you shipping these uh, immigrants uh, up north? We need them to pick the crops down here. What did you say? Now it seems like Republicans doing even better. How do you think it plays out this November? Well, obviously, it's a, it's a major demographic group, growing demographic, demographic group. Um, and the, the switches have been taking place over the past five to ten years. You noted Donald Trump picked up a far more uh, uh, Hispanic Latino vote than was anticipated. Those numbers appear to be uh, either stabilized or growing even more in the Republican favor. Just goes to show you that this whole notion that the demographics are destiny for uh, the Democrats uh, was wrong, that it wasn't about immigration reform uh, for obvious reasons, but that um, Hispanic voters have a wide swath of issues that they care about. And in this case, they're like other voters. They care about the economy. Uh, they are worried about inflation. Uh, and they're worried about the border, too. And those are factoring into the success of Republican candidates. Now, there are certain states where different uh, there are different Hispanic communities that will vote in different ways, so it's not a monolith. Uh, but if you're looking at it from the broad picture, 30,000-foot lens, if you're a Democrat, this is troubling. 
You don't have to go to hell. You're in hell. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell. Because democracy basically means government by the people, of the people, for the people. But the people are retarded. <laughs> then strangled them and finally dismembered their body. Right. Then do available. And homelessness and all that. And now, the voice you've been waiting for. There is a secret song at the center of the world. Sound is like a racist I'm here. I'm kinda retarded. Women come in all different colors and shapes and sizes, and everybody has their own preferences. Some people, it's a turn off for a woman to have very short hair, and other guys are very much into that. Some women have glasses, and some guys are very much into the naughty librarian kind of thing, and others not so much. And that's all fine and good. Everybody has their personal preferences. But some women have penises. <laughs> And if you won't sleep with them, you're transphobic. Now I realize that this is a three-year-old story, but I just happened to come across it a few days ago. And it was one of those moments where you just think, holy shit, our society is doomed. This is the kind of conversation that we have to have in our society today. Oh, it's okay, you know, if you have any kind of preference or with, you know, respect to anything, but, oh, if you don't like a woman with a penis, oh, well then you have an irrational fear and you're some kind of bigot. But I guess apparently maybe some people prefer their women to come with a penis. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. But you can't just simply say, yeah, no, that's just not really my thing. Because now you're some kind of hate monger. And this is just another example of how Western culture in general and American culture in particular is being turned into a joke on the world stage. Even people like North Koreans would look at this and think, well, what the fuck is wrong with these people? And think how backwards as fuck that country is. And it sure doesn't help that the two highest offices in our country are being held by Tweedledum and Tweedledemented. Every single week I've got clips of Biden saying some jackassy shit. California, Louisiana, Minnesota, Texas, to, to help however they can. And New York sent not only a congressman, one of the most congresswomen in the Congress. What? They wanted to talk to me about Puerto Rico. Ah, uh, No, remember? We sat there? Yes. yes. And so, it is uh, one of the best congresswomen in the Congress, congresspersons in the entire Congress. What in the hell is he talking about? Between all minorities, we have 20% of our state is minority. And so I, uh, I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community at home, politically. You are a fucking idiot. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. Or wandering around, lost on stage, looking like a buffoon, shaking hands with ghosts. Is it any wonder why the Saudis who dominate OPEC the way the U.S. dominates NATO just dicked us over and said, no, nah, we're going to cut production? If there's anybody we should be able to lean on, it's them. Their dirty little war in Yemen wouldn't be possible without the weapons that they get from us. But they look at Joey Skidmarks and think, this guy's a joke, fuck him. And if he has a stroke and dies or anything happens to him, we're stuck with this dipshit. And I've seen how they use that capital to hire people from the community, to open a, a new storefront on, on the main street, how they buy inventory from local businesses. The whole community benefits in one way or another, economically, not to mention psychically, from their presence. Not to mention psychically. And these are the people that are leading us right into World War III. And we've got the establishment in both corrupt political parties seemingly doing everything they can think of to make it actually fucking happen and cheerleading it along. And anybody that even suggests that we might try to find some way to a peaceful end to this war without it ratcheting up to a fucking nuclear exchange, they get shot down and attacked as some kind of Russian sympathizer. 
like this Elon Musk thing that happened the other day. He went on Twitter suggesting a, a possible plan for negotiating peace and ending the war, possibly trying to save millions and even billions of lives. And then you had all these Ukrainian government officials from Zelensky on down telling him to fuck off. And I wonder if that has anything at all to do with the fact that the next day I wake up and hear news that, oh, he's revived his deal to buy Twitter. He had been trying to back out of it because it turned out there was a way more fucking bots than anybody even realized. But then all of a sudden he said, all right, drop the lawsuit. I'll go ahead and I'll pay the original price. Kevin, obviously you've been following all this, but you actually sold back in August. What's your take on what we're seeing right now? It's, it's, it's one of the poorly, most poorly run social media companies and probably the worst run company. It would go down to between 12 and 15 bucks and that Musk would be able to, uh, through you know the threat of litigation, basically do the deal much less. And I don't know why he didn't do that. He didn't have to pay this ridiculous price because the world's corrected. He could have negotiated, but he's Elon and you know I got a lot of respect for what he does and I think this company needs new management. I think he should get the whacking stick out if he's gonna own it and, and just clean house. You're fired. 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 So what did make him change his mind? And will the deal actually go through? Only time will tell. There's also the Starlink thing. Apparently lately while Ukraine has been going on this counteroffensive to take back their territories, they've been having problems with the outages provided by the Starlink system that Elon Musk fucking gave to them. It's hilarious that they would jump down his throat and it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's going to be uh, a lot harder to conduct this war without internet, so maybe you shouldn't attack the guy who literally gave it to you for fucking free. Now, these outages had already been reported before this little Twitter fight broke out, but at this point, if I'm Elon Musk, I'm thinking, well, I guess I'm in no hurry to fix that shit, am I? You want to tell me to fuck off? Maybe I just will. Please, consider liking, subscribing, sharing this video, or leaving a comment. Because every time you do nothing, Vladimir Putin will shoot another puppy. And on Saturday morning, the news broke that a bridge in the Crimea got bombed. The Kerch Bridge. The longest bridge in Europe, actually. With everything that's been going on for the past eight months, it might not seem like that big a deal, but it does signify something new. See, whether you think that the Crimea was legitimately or illegitimately annexed back eight years ago, for the past eight years it has been considered Russian territory. And now with this bridge being disabled, civilians being killed, Russia gets to fully unleash the beast. For all the talk about how the Ukrainians have been putting up a good fight, well, they haven't really gone up against the full-fledged war machine that Russia could bring. Everybody's laughed about how, oh, he says it's a special military operation, but really he's declared war. But not really, no. Being that this was a special military operation, he had to kind of keep the gloves on. This is what kept India and China on their side. But now you're about to see those gloves come off. All the territory that the Ukrainians have been retaking just recently in the past week. You think that might be a trap? I wouldn't be surprised if all this was on purpose. And they go, all right, sure, yeah, let them on in there. And then once they get in and get settled, boom goes the dynamite. And there's going to be retaliation against NATO too. And whether you're talking about this bridge being blown up, or the Nord Stream pipelines, or assassinating Dugan's daughter, doesn't matter what people in the West believe, whether we did it or whether it was the Russians doing a false flag, that really doesn't matter. It matters what the Russians' point of view is, because it's them that's going to be retaliating. And they know the Ukrainians couldn't have pulled off shit like these attacks, not without help from us. And while the politicians in our country try to act like, oh, well, we're not actually involved, and we're just helping them out. That's not how the Russians see it. And I'm expecting to see some kind of retaliation any fucking day now. And when it does come, whether it's nuclear weapons, a massive hack attack, or maybe even just thermobaric weapons, who knows what it'll be, but I'm expecting it to be massive. And it's going to cause a lot of pain and suffering for people in this country that really have nothing to do with anything. 
The rippling after effects might well leave a lot of people in the US dead. Innocent people. It's coming. Something's gonna happen. And there isn't much you or me or really any of the little people can do about it. The one little thought of consolation I get is that all these dipshits with the Ukrainian flag and their fucking profiles and, and talking all this tough shit about how we're gonna crush Russia, they're gonna be the ones that are some of the least prepared and they're gonna be totally fucked. And in a way, they're gonna kind of fucking deserve it. Slancha. All I have in this world is my thoughts and my word. And I don't break them for no one. You understand? So say good night. So say good night to the back. Now. No. 